Yeah, a bit later now at the Wolverhampton Civic Hall, they're cleaning up behind us. As always, Box Nation, the first to arrive and last to leave. And John, John Rawling has, has joined me. And John, you've been down uh, talking to Enzo Macronelli, and there's real concern up here. And the, the advice from here, from, from, from Steve and myself, is perhaps he should call it a day, but you can update us on the whole scenario. Well, listen, I, I, I do think that Enzo is, uh, is his own harshest critic, and he's going, to be, he's going to be taking a look at that fight, and he's going to know all the, all the failings that we've identified. And he was very, very down behind the scenes. He's, uh, he was, I think, not far away from tears. He came, out of the, he came out of the ring, and the first thing he said in no uncertain terms was that was awful. And, uh, and in, the, in the dressing room, he was just saying to me that he felt weak. He didn't feel himself tonight. He couldn't get his punches off as he wanted to. And, and he, he, he knew that he was badly hurt in those first three rounds. And I think he's fully aware that one more big shot from McPhilbin at that stage would have taken him out. And he's also fully aware that, uh, that in his heyday, Shane McPhilbin would have been beaten and beaten with some comfort. Mm, uh, and uh, another thing that, that, he, that he said down there, uh, Steve, I just haven't got it anymore. He hasn't got it anymore. It's a sad, we all we love Enzo. Yeah. And maybe that's why we're, you know, we're virtually pleading with him to, to, to pack it in. It was some of what John said what he would have done to Shane McPhilbin. He said there's something Steve said, and uh, um, Matty Askin said it like a minute before you about. Yeah, it was sort of fed you call in for sparring that yeah. time, and that's what he would have been for Enzo. And, that, and that's not knocking Shane, he's only had 10, 11 pro fights. It's, it's up to people close to him to give him, the, give him the news that probably he doesn't want to hear. But people like Dean Powell in the corner, he's a strong enough character, Steve, to, to, to give this sort of advice. And uh, people are, are going to have to be saying, look, you know, your punch resistance is gone. And someone's going to have to speak to Enzo Calzacchi as well, because, you know, we all... Where we was all, he? Well, he's not allowed in, but he's not allowed in the ring. And I suppose it would have hurt him too much to be here because of that first aid ridiculous situation. Someone's got to speak to Enzo, sit down with Enzo, and make Enzo see the sense that we saw from ringside, that we could sense from our, from our privileged perch tonight. Because the, the, the bottom line is, the punch resistance has been in decline. He's come back. He's been an exciting fight. As we talked about Bruce Scott, he was down here, and Dark commentator said, this fight's over. So we know Enzo can come come back from being hurt. He's done it tonight and I don't want anyone to forget the first three rounds and only talk about the last nine rounds. Well, these are the these that have seen the first, the first knockdown and if it hadn't been for, for the, the mysterious disappearing 40 odd oh. seconds, my firm belief, John Rawling, is that the fight would not have gone beyond the first no, round. He was, he was one punch to him. He was one punch away from being, from being stopped here. Look, the legs are completely gone. Down he goes. He takes the knee, he has the presence of mind not to spring straight back up, because had he done so... Well, he gets up he and down, down, and then yeah. he remembers yeah. when he gets up. Yeah. You see, but, he, but said, here, he said afterwards, he was fine, he was OK. Is that denial no, or what? He wasn't fine. He wasn't fine. Of course he wasn't fine. Yeah. You know, we've seen enough fights over the years. Yeah. One more big punch there, and it was all and, over. And we saw his eyes clear in the third round. Bizarrely, when he went down in the third round, when he got sort of clubbed a couple of times and pushed, as he got up, I said to I said on air, I said, he's now clear, because yeah. he'd somehow, that had cleared his head. In the first round and the second round, he didn't know where he was, Jim. And here's the, here's the, the second knockdown in, in, in round three, and as I think, as you said, John, at one stage, McPhilbin was five points up. But I think, oh. Steve Lewis, the thing about it is, is though, although Enzo won just about every round after that horrible first first three, he was fighting against a guy who threw very little at him. Seemed to lose the, the, the block. Second, throw a shot. Second, half, second half of the fight, the sixth round he threw a right hand that called him. I think you mm. gave him the sixth round. And uh, there was nothing after that. But I just hope, uh, in my heart of hearts, that he doesn't do anything after Frankel, where two, three days later, he doesn't start looking for excuses. Well, I am a light heavyweight. Yeah. I was coming too heavy at that way. I just hope he doesn't. Yeah. And that's not being hard on him. I just want him to retire for someone who really, really thinks the world of him and cares for him. Let's, let me talk to you about, about the Cleverly fight that has been mooted, that we're getting everybody going in Wales, the fight that he really wants. I mean, again, that the danger is, or, or the luck might be the likelihood, two or three days' time, he'll think of that, you know, I really, I want to go out, all guns blazing, in Wales, well, fighting Cleverly. What would you say to that? The, the, one, the one danger, uh, when you analyse that, is that Cleverly is not, is not a banger like Shane McPhilbin, and he goes into a fight weighing 13 stones, whereas McPhilbin was probably over 15 tonight. Mm. That's a big difference. And, he, and Cleverly is not one big shot puncher who's going to take you out. And 
there might be a rationale in that whereby Enzo is going to say I'll have a chance against that, so that mm. sort of fighter. But personally, yeah. I think he'd be I think he'd be in denial, and I think that would be a wrong a wrong we'll, decision we'll to make. See. Steve, what about these forty seconds? What what what, what is going to happen about that, irrespective of what happens to? Well, it's now. either forty-seven or it's forty-five seconds. Well, it's 40 Obviously, we'll get a comment. So. We'll get a comment from the British Boxing Board of Control. Uh, I would imagine they'll investigate it. They'll they'll establish that there was there was there was nothing illegal going on. It was just a mistake by by a trigger happy, a bell happy, uh, uh, the timekeeper. And I would imagine they may actually make inquiries about a rematch. However, there's all sorts of other fights going on. This fight here should have been a different fight. Tony Conquest will want his slot. Yeah. Matty Askins, Dickinson. So who knows? And also, McPhilbin is convinced. He's convinced. That, that, that Enzo will not fight again. So that's, that's what Shane says. Absolutely. Okay, just a quick comment from you about this place. What a, what a, what oh, a great arena. I love it, I love it. It's a, it's a great atmosphere and the, the fans turned out in force, didn't they? And okay, we've had, we've had an awful lot to talk about, but we've also had a great night's entertainment. Absolutely, Terrific. brilliant night's entertainment. Uh, Steve Bunce, Steve Lewis, John Rawling, thank you very much indeed for your company. That just